4 of our Colossians study. And it's called Forgiven and Qualified. Yay. We're going to back up just a little bit. Today we're going to go over verse, uh, Colossians chapter 2, verses 11 through 23. We're going to finish up chapter 2 of Colossians. But before we go into verse 11, we're just going to back up for a minute so we can see the flow of what the Spirit of God is wanting to show us and teach us in chapter 2 of Colossians. So I'm going to start with verse 8. Colossians 2, verse 8 through 10 in the New Living Translation. Don't let anyone capture you with empty philosophies and high-sounding nonsense that comes from human thinking and from the spiritual powers of this world rather than from Christ. For in Christ lives all the fullness of God in a human body. So you are complete through your union with Christ who was the head of over every ruler and authority. This last week when I was going over these verses and just, you know, I continually, continually asked the Spirit of God to give me deeper revelation of the truth that sets me free, to to establish my heart more in my identity in Christ, to help me to see things that maybe I haven't seen before. It's amazing when you, when you read the Word of God with the Holy Spirit, how alive the Scriptures become. I mean, I read them for years just trying to figure it out in my own mind. And, you know, the Scripture says, don't let anyone capture you with their empty philosophy and high-sounding nonsense from, that comes from human thinking. That's all human reasoning of how to interpret the Word of God. That's all it is. Unless you see Jesus, you don't see the truth. And if you don't see the truth, the Scriptures won't set you free. They'll actually put you in bondage. Did you know that? Yes, because it did me for many, many years. The very scriptures that were supposed to set me free put me in bondage because I thought it made me look like I wasn't complete, like I wasn't good enough, like I needed to do more to please God, that I needed to, you know, read my Bible more, more even having more faith. You know, there were so many, so many times I heard messages about faith that I would walk away going, I just need to work on my faith. What is that? That's a sense of lack. It's not a sense of completeness. It's a sense that something's wrong with me, and because I I don't have enough faith, then I'm not qualified, and it's not going to work out well for me. So the very scriptures without a revelation of Jesus can put you in bondage. The law kills, the Spirit gives life, right? So I just, again, and I know I encourage you a lot with this, but when when you read the Bible, just ask the Holy Spirit to reveal Jesus to you. Because when you see Jesus in the scriptures, you see the truth. And I'm going to tell you, next week we're going to go over a scripture that if you don't see Jesus, and it'll throw you right off the track of the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And we're going to go through it. We're going to look at it in the light of Jesus. We're going to look at it, interpreting it through the whole scope of what the Apostle Paul is saying in Colossians. Because I just, and I'm not going to get into it right now. I'm kind of wanting to go there, but I'm going to restrain myself. But the truth is, we have been learning that Christ lives in us, that we're complete in him, that the Father has made peace with the world. And then you come across the scripture that goes against everything the whole book talked about. I mean, it looks like it does, right? But we're going to see next week. You're going to get revelation next week, and I'm going to get revelation, and we're going to settle in our heart the truth of God's word, all right? So come next week. Anyway, so I'm I'm reading through these verses as we go go into verses 11 through 23. And as I was reading them, I just, you know, was pondering. Don't let anyone capture you with empty philosophies and high-sounding nonsense that comes from human thinking. Human thinking, let me just tell you real clearly what it is. It's anything that exalts itself above the knowledge of God. When your human reasoning begins to say, yeah, but, then you've just, it's your philosophy. It's your human thinking. You know, the truth is we're complete in Christ. The truth is we're qualified in Jesus. The truth is we're righteous. The truth is we're loved and approved and accepted. And somebody would come along and say, yeah, but. 
That's human thinking that's been exalted above the knowledge of God. Because the knowledge of God is Jesus. And he has said that you're complete. And so it says, For in Christ lives all the fullness of God in a human body. So you are complete through your union with Christ. There is nothing lacking in us. Jesus lives in you. You are one with him. Everything he is, you are. If he's righteous, you're righteous. If he's approved, you're approved. If he's wonderful, you're wonderful. If he's worthy, then what are you? Worthy. Worthy. Everything he is, you are because you are one with him. He made you equal with him in nature. He gave you his divine nature. Everything that makes up the character of who Jesus is, is your character. That's your new nature. That that is why you're complete through your union, your oneness with Christ. And this is the part I love. Who is the head over every ruler and authority. Now, when you're the head of a company... You're the final authority, aren't you, in that company? When you're the head of a nation, you're the final authority in that nation, aren't you? If you're the head of the police force, you know what I'm saying? If you're the head, guess what that means? You're the final authority. There is no authority that's over you. You make the decision. You do the judgment. You say what's true, and there is nobody that's going over you. This scripture says... You have been made complete through your union with Christ, who is the head of all rule, of all rulers, and all authority. So any ruler or authority that would try to tell you that you're not complete, that you're not, that you're lacking in some way, is subject to the higher authority which is Jesus himself, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, that has declared you forgiven, perfect, wonderful, righteous, and there is no greater authority than that. He's the King of kings and the Lord of lords. He's the head of all rulers and all authority. Now let me tell you why we find ourselves not experiencing the glory of God. We find ourselves not experiencing peace, not experiencing joy, not experiencing the the feeling of completeness because we've exalted another authority or rule over Jesus because we have decided that what his declaration over us is, you're forgiven, you're not guilty, there's no condemnation for you. Do you hear what I'm saying? This is what the the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit has agreed about concerning you because you are one with Jesus, that you're qualified, forgiven, righteous, loved. Now, the only time that you lose the, the effect that that would bring on your heart, which is peace and joy, is when you exalt somebody else's authority, and it might be yours. Somebody else's rule, and it might be the enemy, and it might be somebody you work with, and it might be your friend or your enemy or your child or your, you know what I'm saying? It could be anybody that you are taking their opinion and, the, and you're allowing them to rule your life because their authority is higher than the authority of Christ in your mind. Do you all hear what I'm saying? I'm telling you how to live free. (laughs) You live free when you go, Jesus, you're the rule. When you know when you say, he's my Lord, you know what you're saying? Your authority is what I live under and by. Your rule over me is what I, I live by what you believe about me. I don't live by what others believe about me. Jesus is my Lord. He is the head in my life above every rule, above every authority. And he says that through my union with him, I am complete. Isn't that good? So when you live, you know, let's let's get real here. How many years have I said, Jesus is my Lord? 
No, he's only our Lord. I'm, he's our Lord when we let his authority and rule and opinion be the final authority on our identity. That's when he's truly being your Lord. Otherwise, you're allowing somebody else to rule and control your life because you're letting their opinion, what they see and think of you, determine how you feel in your soul. Isn't that good? Jesus is the head of all rule and authority. What does that mean? His word is final. God said it, and that settles it forever. And like I said last week, the only question is, is will you believe it? Will you come in agreement with it? Will you let him rule your life by coming into agreement that you are complete in Jesus? And his opinion and the identity that he's given you is what you embrace as your identity in Jesus. Amen? Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Jesus, Jesus is the final rule and authority over you. He judges you innocent, forgiven, and qualified. Colossians 2, 11 through 14. When you came to Christ, you were circumcised, but not by a physical procedure. Christ performed a spiritual circumcision, the cutting away of your sinful nature. For you were buried with Christ when you were baptized, and with him you were raised to new life because you trusted the mighty power of God who raised Christ from the dead. Now let me ask you a question. When were you raised to this new life? What does the scripture say? I want you to see this. Just, just, I just want you to see it real clearly, okay? So you're never caught off guard or t- deceived into believing something that's not true. For you were buried with Christ when you were baptized, and with him you were raised to new life because you trusted the mighty power of God who raised Christ from the dead. You were brought to life. You were dead in your sin. The scriptures tell us all that we were dead in our sin. But you were brought to life when you trusted the mighty power of God who raised Christ from the dead. You were dead because of your sins and because your sinful nature was not yet cut away. Now, why were you dead? We were dead because of our sins and because our sinful nature was not yet cut away. Then God made you alive with Christ, for he forgave all your sins. How did did you come alive in Christ? He forgave all your sins. That's how you came alive. You were dead in your sin, okay? You were dead in your sin, and Jesus forgave all of your sin. And when he did, I mean, he completely, you, we were sinners and we were made righteous through the blood of Jesus, okay? Our identity was that we were sinners. But when we came alive in Christ, when we put our trust in Jesus, he forgave all of our sin forever. We're no longer sinners. We're no longer um, We no longer lack anything. There's nothing wrong with us. I mean, he cleaned us up forever. And your your mistakes, I mean, you think you go, but but I still sin, but I still do things that are wrong. That doesn't make you a sinner anymore because it's been wiped away. Every action, every sin you could ever, anything you could ever do wrong, he forgave it. And your new identity is righteous. And there cannot be sin in you because you are righteous. That doesn't mean you don't act wrong at times. But there's not sin in your new nature. Your new nature is forever and completely righteous. 
You came alive as a righteous in Christ because of your union with him. And this is the final authority over you. And when you agree with that final authority, all your sins are forgiven. You are righteous. You have been qualified. There is nothing you need to do. Not one thing you need to do to qualify yourself. Jesus did it. When you come into agreement with that, you begin to experience the life that Jesus came to give you. You begin to experience who God is in your life. Now, listen to this. Verse 14, he canceled. Okay, let's go back. Then God made you alive with Christ, for he forgave all our sins. He canceled the record of the charges against us and took it away by nailing it to the cross. What did he do? He took away the charges that were against you by nailing it to the cross. What were the charges against you? Okay, let's read it in the Amplified Bible. Verse 14. Having canceled and blotted out and wiped away the handwriting of the note with its legal decrees and demands which was in force and stood against us, hostile to us, this note with its regulations and its decrees and its demands, he set aside and clearly cleared completely out of our way by nailing it to his cross. This law, these demands of you that you had to do to qualify to be righteous, he took it out of your way, never for you to be defined by the law again, by nailing it to the cross. The law, okay, when you stood in the court of law, When you stand in the court of law, the lawyer brings the law up and says how you broke the law. And you're guilty. Now, I'm just talking to the natural. Let's just think about this in the natural for a minute, okay? You come into a courtroom, and you have done something wrong. And the lawyer comes up and says, this is the law of the land, and this person has broke it. They are guilty as charged. What the scripture is saying is the Father cleared your record. Even though you you were guilty as charged, you broke the law. You, you, the, the, the judgment according to the law is you're disqualified. Because the law says you have to obey every God, every command, every law perfectly in order to be righteous in order to be qualified for God to move in your life, in order for God to provide for you, in order for God to answer your prayers concerning your children, in order for God to deliver your children, in order for God to heal you, in order for God to answer your prayers and bring to pass his plan for you, you have to do everything right. That's what the law says. But none of us did it. We all messed up in the court of law. We're all guilty. The charges against us we you're guilty. Does everybody agree with that? Is there anybody who has never done anything wrong in this room? Look, there's no hands. Look around. Nobody's hands are up. So we're all standing in this courtroom, and the enemy of our soul has the law in his hand, telling us that we are not qualified because we haven't done everything right. And the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit has cleared our record by forgiving us of all our wrongdoing, completely clearing it off of our record. When somebody looks up our back history, you know, when somebody looks up, what's that called? Your criminal report? (laughs) No, what is it? Your what record? Your record, whatever? It says... Righteous, qualified, declared innocent by the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Woohoo! That's what it says. Because he took the charges that was against you. He took the law that you could not fulfill yourself. And he nailed it to the cross. And he says, it is finished. I fulfilled the law for you. Now you get my identity, you get my life, you get my completeness, not because of what you've done, 
but because you accepted the gift that I offer you. Amen? When we understand that we're qualified, that we're forgiven, that the record has been wiped clean, I mean, forever and ever and ever, every day of your life, you're qualified. The only thing that can cause you not to experience the qualification or the inheritance of the saints is when you allow condemnation and accusation to tell you that you're not. The scripture says, and just listen to this, I love this. He, he canceled and blotted away the handwriting that was against you. He took the charges that were against you and he nailed them to the cross. And in doing this, Jesus disarmed every voice that would try to accuse or judge you guilty. So let no one disqualify you. Let no one's opinion define you but God's. Colossians 2, 15 through 23. Now I'm going to back up because I want you to see the flow of this. So good. Then God made you alive with Christ, for he forgave all our sins. He canceled the record of the charges against us and took it away by nailing it to the cross. God disarmed the principalities and powers that were ranged against us and made a bold display and public example of them, triumphing over them in him and in it, the cross. Therefore, let no one sit in judgment on you. In matters of food and drink or with regard to a feast day or a new moon or a Sabbath, such things are only the shadow of things that are to come, and they have only a symbolic value. But the reality, the substance, the solid fact of what is foreshadowed, the body of it belongs to Christ. Let no one defraud you. Let no one deceive you by acting as an umpire and declaring you unworthy and disqualifying you for the prize. If the king of kings has declared you qualified, has declared you complete, has declared you innocent, he, his, his judgment over you is your innocent. His judgment over you is your qualified. My child, rest in me. Just rest in me. I've qualified you. You don't need to worry. You don't need to fret. Just rest in what I've said. I'm the final authority in your life. Let nobody deceive you into believing that you are disqualified because you're not keeping man-made rules. Because you're not doing it just like they tell you you have to do it. Don't let anybody say you're unworthy and disqualify you for the prize when the king of kings, the head of all rule and authority, has already judged you perfect. Amen? Amen. Now I'm going to share with you, you know, this is such wonderful good news truth. But let me tell you something. This changes your life when you understand how to apply it in your daily life. I can sit here and tell you this is good news, but if you don't understand how to apply what I just told you, it really doesn't have a whole lot of value, does it? Is it true? Okay. So I'm going to tell you the day the Spirit of God helped me with this very passage of scripture, gave me revelation and understanding of it, and it has changed everything for me. Several, several years ago, I was teaching Bible study at Asbury Methodist Church on Thursday morning, and I was teaching the Because of Jesus Bible study. And one morning when I was getting ready to, get, to go teach Bible study, I was mulling over in my head, in my mind, something that my husband had done that was very upsetting and made me mad. And that particular morning, I didn't turn to Jesus. I just sat there and thought and thought and thought about how mad I was at him and how what he did was not right 
and how I didn't agree with it. I thought some more on it. I thought some more on it. And I thought, I'm just going to go take care of this right now. (laughs) Remember, Jesus was not in my sight, not in my thoughts, didn't turn to him to ask for help. I can handle this one. So I go into my husband's office that morning. Remember, I'm getting ready to teach Bible study. (laughs) I go into his office, and I start letting him know exactly how I feel about what had happened and how upset I was, and guess what happened? A fight broke out. Now we're, you know, raising our voices at each other. Not a pretty picture. I start crying. I'm so upset, so mad. Okay? Then I, at the end of this crap, I just put my head down like this, and I, then I looked up, and I said, look what you did to me. Look what you did to me. So I went out of the office, shut that door hard, walking back to my room, and the voices began to come. The voices of disqualification. The voices of you're not worthy to teach Bible study. Look at you. You've been telling these people to look to Jesus. Did you look to Jesus? No, I didn't. And you're- because of Jesus Ministries introduces our first children's storybook, Are You a Chicken Head? by Connie Witter. This fun little book asks the big life question, what's true about you? Mommy, that girl called me a chicken head. Is that true, Victoria? Are you a chicken head? What does Jesus say about you? For many years, I have shared this true story to encourage others to believe what Jesus says about them. I pray this book will inspire parents, grandparents, and children alike to confidently respond. I believe what Jesus says about me. Order this delightful book today. Call 918-994-6500 or go online at becauseofjesus.com where Bible studies are always in the light of Jesus. Because of Jesus Ministries is your resource for grace-filled, Jesus-focused Bible studies and curriculum for all ages. Adult Bible studies, books, devotionals for girls and teens, DVDs, CDs, and MP3s. We offer group Bible study packages as well. Connect with us and check out our many free resources online at ConnieWitter.com, where Bible studies are always in the light of Jesus.